are you staying? Welcome to another Donnery Drennan. The day I'm for treading a well-worn path for me. To me home here in Tully Garley, along the river to Cully Beggy. Tully Gurley, when I was growing up, was little more than a townland south of Ballymena. But like a lot of places, it's now been swallowed up by urban sprawl. The old narrow stone bridge is a relic of another time. The next town land along is Gulgorm, full of evidence of progress. Whoa. Right. Right, lads, how are you right. doing? Right. Yes. Yes. Very bad. bad, very bad. Yeah. Right. Cut out of day, that, isn't it? Right. No heat. No. <laughs> but see Tully Garley Bridge, I just think there's walking over it. How old is this Tully Garley Bridge? I would say roughly 150, 200 years or something like that. We're not sure. Before your time, anyway. Long, long <laughs> before my time. <laughs> that bridge has been there, I would say, 200 years easy. So, but Morris, I believe there's plans out for the, the new bridge. Well, yeah. there's plans out for it anyway, and, and there's plans up in the community centre, but we have <laughs> we is here. But they're talking about, you know, but. Keeping it that some of the stone work in it. Oh, is that right? That's oh. good. Oh. It'd be nice to see it that. Aye, oh, because it's a beautiful old bridge. Oh. <laughs> Tell us that. You see the Sir Hal? Oh. I hear it called the Sir Hal and the Sir Hal. Anybody any idea why it was? Yeah. I asked the man on Saturday oh. and he said it was the stagecoaches coming to the first to Derry and not how the far higher and that's the day. Uh-huh. And the uh, driver was going up, he says, Isn't that a sure hell? Oh. The horses were going to run around the pub. Well, listen, lads, I could stay here and yarn with you all day, but I'm, I've got a serious donner ahead of me. I've got the yeah. Gorham Castle and then heading up to Cully Beggy. Yeah. I'll see you there. All yeah. Yeah. All yeah. All For this part of the journey, my guide is the Braid Water, as it flows steadily out from Ballymena. This is what they call the meeting of the waters, where the Braid Water flows into the River Main. And I've fallen the banks of the River Main through Grace Hill the whole way to Cully Beggy. Is that's where you're at now? Wally! I hope you're better at that than you were at Kegel Football, hey? Still no idea where the ball's going, Wally. Oh, believe you that. wait for a wee donner. Uh, go up to the castle right now to see Christopher. Christopher's expecting you. Right, right. Wally. See you later, really. The Gulgorm Estate has been developed into an impressive golf course. But it is still home to a beautiful 17th century house. And it's there that's my next port of call. Oh, Christopher, how are you doing? Very good to see you. Likewise. Would you like to have a look around? I'd love to have a look around, I. Cold day. Very cold day. Tell me, Christopher, where was this castle actually built? Well, it was sometime between 1618 and 1645. I mean, it's what we do know is that Dr. Colville, who was the alchemist who sold himself the devil for gold and knowledge, yeah. he was certainly in residence by 1645. He was some boy. Uh, he, he, he was a very interesting character. Um, there's a huge legend that runs with him about how he tricked the devil out of his soul. 
uh, and the devil never managed to actually catch him at the end. It has to be a colossal undertaking looking after an estate and a castle like this. Well, I've been at it since 1980. My grandmother's family, who are the youngs from Ballymena, um, bought the estate in about 1830. Um, <clears throat> my grandmother died in 1980 and I inherited it. So since I've been here, I've really been concentrating on trying to keep the place together and give it a viable future. And we sort of phased the development because the place was in such bad order. And the first thing we did was to convert all these outbuildings, which had completely collapsed and were totally dilapidated, um, into offices and units, which we now have. We've got 18 units and about 40 people working here. And it's ideal. It's, it's regenerated the courtyard. Uh, it was second to Hampton Court Palace for building restoration of the year, um, RICS awards in 1993, as well as winning Civic Trust awards and various other things. So it's great to be able to get this part of it um, mm. regenerated and to give that a future. But the most important phase of, of all, of course, is the actual castle itself. Um, because without that, we have, we have nothing. And the building is absolutely unique. Um, there is no other building, I don't think, like it in Northern Ireland and probably not in Ireland. It's so old. It has got no extensions added on. It's exactly as it originally was, but it now needs some serious money spent on it, um, two or three million pounds. And it needs, more important than that, these places have got to have a future. If you can't give them a future, then, then they're just going to gradually crumble. Now, we've, we've been in for planning for six years <clears throat> to putting together a project which turns, will turn this into Northern Isles only boutique castle hotel together with a golf course, a golf resort, and it'll be sitting in the middle of Ballymena. That's a wonderful vision for the future, Chris, and I'm sure you'll find some way of manifesting it. Well, thanks very much indeed. Good to see you. Likewise, Chris. Bye, bye. Bye. Goodbye. On the edge of the castle grounds lie the ruins of the estate chapel. This is the chapel of Galgorm Castle, where many of the residents of the castle have their memorials here and were buried just outside this chapel. It was born in 1798 by the United Irishmen, and there's all kinds of fascinating history to do with the castle. King William's army stopped off here on the way to the Battle of the Boyne. And in the late 19th century, Rose Young was born here. She was a famous scholar. And interestingly enough, she was off in the glens of Antrim, collecting stories and songs in the Irish language, while her father was organizing the 1914 gun running from Larne for the Ulster Volunteer Force. But some of the most fantastic stories that I grew up with in this area were to do with the ghost stories of the castle. Mostly going back to one of its first inhabitants, the Reverend Alexander Colville, who moved in here in 1645. Alexander Colville was an ordained minister, but they say he sold his soul to the devil. And that is why to this very day, apparently there is a room in the castle that remains locked. No one wants to go there. <laughs> <laughs> 